Okay, okay. Testing, testing. Mic check. One, two, one, two. I'm here. I was having a little bit of issues. Um, apparently, there was a press conference today, like 30, 40 minutes ago, uh, with Gavin Petito's family and, I guess, attorneys. And so um, I just wanted to pop in for a little bit. Uh, to watch the presser and we can talk a little bit about it. I guess they're saying that the officers were negligent. This was from August 12th. Um, yeah, August 12th, where the, the person called 911 and stated that, uh, supposedly, I think it was, they said that Brian hit Gabby or was it the other way around? I don't even remember. It was different reports. They also said supposedly that um, a previously undisclosed photo of Petito taken during an incident shows a close-up of Gabby's face where blood is smeared on her cheek. I don't know. So we're going to listen to the presser and see what that's about. Going to give it like a minute for people to join. If you guys could hit like, please. Subscribe. <laughs> Shay, if you guys could hit like, please, I'd appreciate it, man. The kids are going back to school too. Back to school. Um, there was also an interview recently that the mother did, I think, with was it NBC Today? Uh, and she talked about DV. I think she donated money. I'm gonna have to read. It says Gabby Petito's legacy: a hundred thousand dollars for DV hotline. That's pretty interesting. Schmidt is now partnering with the National Domestic Violence Hotline. To help other survivors, others survive turbulent and violent relationships. And the Gabby Petito Foundation has donated $100,000 to that. So, hey. So that's going on as well. What's up? Thanks, Becky. Appreciate that. I just threw on whatever because I'm in the process of like cleaning right now. <laughs> Trying to get my life together. Lisa, you didn't get a notification? Not surprised. Amazing. Why no notification? I haven't gotten live in a couple days. Okay. Diggs tells me I have proof there was injuries to her face. I analyze. Looks, can you send it to me or timestamp it? Let's take a look at it. Too. So we'll do the pressure first and then we'll see about the um bruises to her face. Face. And I can't believe nobody told me there was a pressure today. Was this just random unannounced or did they announce it? Why didn't we know? Why didn't I know about this? I don't know. All right, let's see. And I think the audio was like super loud, so I might have to turn it down for you guys. Throughout the United States and the world, this lawsuit is only one part of the broader effort to raise awareness of intimate partner violence and its potential dangers. They have set up the Gabby Petito Foundation. Okay, Cap said it was last minute. Okay, it was last minute. Okay, okay, okay. I got you. I got you. This foundation has already donated hundreds of thousands of dollars to groups focusing on intimate and domestic violence, including a $100,000 donation okay. last week to the National Domestic Violence Hotline, which I'm sure you're aware of. It's pretty dope. Okay. They hope their efforts to help Hey, at these press conferences, they never have the audio right. Never. Now it's too loud. Now it's like, I don't know what it is. That's just how the volume is. I turned it down for you guys. I could turn it on a little bit more, but it's still going to sound loud like that because they, I don't know, they had the microphone super. Amazing. Will save lives and give meaning to the senseless, avoidable, and tragic murder now we got too much daughter. Better. <laughs> can't, we can't get a nice balance. Good morning. Thank you for being here. As uh, my partner Jim said, uh, my name is Brian Stewart, um, and I'm grateful to be with you today and grateful for your attention to this important case. Um, I, I will just say that uh, at the outset that the, the purpose of this lawsuit is uh, is just one part of the family's broader effort 
to raise awareness and education for to protect domestic victims of domestic violence and to help make sure that our governmental institutions are are held to account and that they are given the resources and training that they need to do their jobs in the effective way that they would want to and and to do it in a way that protects the most vulnerable members of our society and will prevent tragedies such as this one from happening again. Our, our purpose in, in, in filing the lawsuit and, and the family wants to be clear about this is not to punish individual officers but is to honor the efforts of dedicated police officers and while it is tough to do, we feel a responsibility to support them by demanding that changes needed to help them do their job better will be, will be accomplished. We believe that the only effective way to correct these problems is to hold our institutions accountable for their failures, including in law enforcement. But as we said, this is just part of a, a larger effort. For those of you that remember this when we were covering it, right, the whole situation, which I'm kind of trying to flash back now, because remember there was a whole full body cam, which I don't even remember how long that thing was. It was like an hour, two hours long. Do you guys think the cops acted wrong or were they just trying to do the best that they thought they could do or regardless of however they messed up? Throughout the United States and the world. What just happened? That uh, oh, at the outset, that the the purpose of this lawsuit is uh, is just one part of the family's broader effort to raise awareness mm -hmm. and education for to protect domestic victims of the domestic violence right. and to help make sure that our governmental institutions mm -hmm. are are held to account and that they are given the oh, resources and training that they need to do their jobs in the effective way that they would want to and and to do it in a way that protects the most vulnerable members of our society and will prevent tragedies such as this one from happening again our our purpose in 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 filing the so for those wondering it says here, this is a statement that's going to come up, but it's, it says here, so if you're, you're wondering what the allegations are, I mean, there's a whole file too that we're going to get into after, I guess. I, w I just want to see if they read it so I don't have to read it, but it says, had the officers involved had the training to implement proper lethality assessment and recognize the obvious indicators of abuse, it would have been clear to them that Gabby was the victim of intimate partner violence and needed immediate protection. Brian Stewart, a uh, lawyer for the family said. So, I mean, it's, I think for a lot of people, it's clear, you know, but there was people that felt that Brian was, which I don't know how, I mean, in the moment in time when it was happening, I could see how maybe people were thinking otherwise, but like now hindsight, seeing everything, she's dead and all the like weird shit, the notes and all that stuff, you know, the lawsuit and, and the family wants to be clear about this is not to punish individual officers, but is to honor the efforts of dedicated police officers i felt like they tried to do the right thing but they they messed up for sure and Some, while it is and somebody should have been arrested whoever it is we, we had that whole conversation too somebody should have been arrested that day it's tough to do we feel a responsibility like to support them by demanding the police, hey. <laughs> that changes needed uh, to help them do their job better will be will be accomplished we believe that the only effective way to correct these problems is to hold our institutions accountable for their failures, including in law enforcement. But as we said, this is just part of a, a larger effort to help other people uh, and other victims of domestic violence understand that there are resources and that there, there are helps available and that they can uh, rely on those and rely on the response of law enforcement. Um, the family will will tell you, but that they 
throughout this last year have been uh, received many, many messages from victims of domestic violence who have told their stories of how they were inspired to get out of dangerous situations and to protect themselves and to seek out resources. And again, while it is difficult to do these things for the family, they feel a, a responsibility to honor Gabby's le legacy by, by doing this work. And now I'll uh, take any questions you may have about, uh, I guess, what we're doing uh, today, if, if you have any questions about uh, the, the purpose of, of the lawsuit or, or, uh, or the procedure of, of the law. Why don't these officers qualify for governmental immunity under Utah law? There is a governmental immunity statute in, in Utah, and we believe that that these officers uh, were were negligent, and that their negligence contributed to the cause of Gabby's death. And we believe that the uh, the law in Utah is there's some conflict in terms of the the governmental immunity statute and the Utah Constitution's protection of the right to bring causes of action for wrongful death. The Utah Constitution says that that right shall not be infringed and that that is the, the Supreme Court. So there's some rights and protections for the cops, I guess, but they believe that because of what wrongful death, I guess, they believe that that doesn't count, I guess. Supreme law on the subject in Utah. Yes. What did they do wrong? Well, I, I again don't want to get into specifics of, of what happened that day. There's a lot of information that has been made available, but there's much information that is not yet available publicly. Um, but I will say that we do agree with the findings of the investigative report that the officers failed to recognize the serious danger that she was in and failed to investigate fully and properly. They did not have the training that they needed to recognize the clear signs that were evident that morning that Gabby was a victim and that she was in serious need of immediate help. Hmm. Uh, it was also clear from the officers themselves. Nobody got notifications. What is up with that? Amazing. And the findings of the report that they did not understand the law and did not apply the law properly in Gabby's situation. Yes. Can you explain what it means to file this notice of intent? In this circumstance, is, is the lawsuit sure to file or are you waiting for a response before filing a lawsuit? Uh, a notice of, of, of intent or a notice of claim is required by, by the statute in order to bring a case against the government in Utah. Um, that is a precursor to being able to file a, a lawsuit. That typically happens uh, a year before or a, before the year anniversary of a, of a loss. Uh, in this case, the Gabby's interaction with Moab City Police Department was on August 12, 2021. And unfortunately, the, the time of her actual death is, is unknown but we're filing that notice now to comply with that requirement. The, the government can reply or not reply, um, and, and then after a time period, the plaintiff is allowed to go ahead with making, making their claim by filing the lawsuit. What is that time period? Well, it depends on whether or not the government responds. Oh. But it's, they have 60 days to respond if they deny the claim earlier then then the time for filing begins earlier um is there any evidence known that and if you guys remember that there was the family is supposed to be i think they come on somewhere around here somewhere but uh, if you guys remember too um there was an independent investigation into the response to the call and they concluded that the officers made several mistakes um but it says could not rule out that gabby's murder might have been prevented if the officers had handled the situation properly. The Moab police has not released or been brought forward yet, that you guys are aware of. 
uh, I'm not going to comment on on more information in terms of the evidence, but the the FBI has extensive information that was collected throughout the search for Gabby that has not yet been replete, released, although their investigation is has been deemed to be completed. Any others? Okay. Hey, uh, thank you, uh, Brian. And Dick uh, Baldwin, at the end there, came in, and he's the representative from uh, the Zimmerman Boer Law Firm. We're glad you're here this morning. Now, if you'd like to ask uh, for just a couple of minutes any questions from the family about why they're bringing this lawsuit and what their feelings are, uh, please feel uh, free to address your questions to anyone on the on the screen there. Yes. Just for Natalie, I noticed that you're very emotional this morning. What what are you what's going through your head? What's kind of the situation you're feeling right now? Nicole. Nicole, sorry, thank you. That's okay. Um, this is just bringing back a lot of pain. Sorry. Um, we just want our people. We're gonna do whatever we can. And that's why we're here. Yes, go ahead. Another one for you, Nicole. Um, you and the Gabby Petito Foundation have spent almost the last year raising awareness of domestic violence and for missing persons. Do you have any message today for people who are victims of these abusive relationships? About just reach out when you can and get the help that you need. Um, you're better than that, and you can get out. Just do it safely. Um, reach out to someone that you trust. Um, I don't know. I'm just. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just so emotional today. I don't know if anybody else wants to help me answer that. <laughs> There's uh, a ton of resources out there. Uh, we've partnered with the National Domestic uh, Victims Hotline uh, through our foundation. Uh, they do amazing work as well as many other organizations out there. Uh, there's a ton of people out there that are willing to help. We're there trying to help. It's anonymous. Uh, get the help you need. Do it quickly. Do it safely. Do it the right way. Reach out to the experts. So. You get to help you get yourself into a safe place. It's, that's that is our goal. People care. We care. There are people that care, and you should everyone out there should know that there are people that will do whatever we can to help. And that's that's, that's it. You know, the people care, and just know it, and reach out. We'll be there. Yes, back there. Yeah, I got a question for you. Parent, but uh, did you feel like things were stacked against you from the very beginning, from law enforcement to Brian, Florida, everything? Wrap it up. Uh, what I know is that she's not here. Yeah, so. Uh, no, I'm not, not going to answer that, to be honest with you. It's, it's not about that right now. Yes, go ahead. So I know you're not supposed to comment on things in the lawsuit, um, but I'm assuming that you have seen the video of the interaction in Moab. And is there anything you can tell me about how you felt watching that and what, just what you wish you, you could have done or any feelings associated with that? I think that um, I've said this man, uh, watching it is very painful, and I wanted to jump to the screen and rescue her. Um, that's, that's all I can really say about that. Okay, let's take uh, one more question out there. Yes, it's back. Yeah, what do you want the public to remember? Yeah. How do you want us to remember? 
I love that question. <laughs> Go ahead, Joe. Use your story. You know, learn from it. There's so much you can take from it. Her legacy is to help people, you know, that don't see a way out. And there are. And use her as, as the light that she was to us. And, and, you know, proper planning and safety and there's people that care. Just start. You're worth it. Thank oh, you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, go um, ahead. As parents, we can never fully wrap our heads around the entire situation and, and what happened. Uh, but all we can hope is that Gabby's legacy and her memory will be a positive one. That through our tra tragedy and all the heartache that we go through daily, uh, it's not a day that goes by that, that we're not talking about or thinking about her. Um, but her legacy to be one that, that is long lasting and positive and helps people. And, and people will see her and they recognize her and can, can possibly compare maybe what they're going through in their life and see it and make a positive change in their life to be better so it doesn't happen to them. So they're, they're not in the same place that we are right now. That's. Uh, Thank you, uh, Gabby's parents, for being available today via Zoom. We appreciate your presence here. We're honored to file this lawsuit on your behalf and try to bring about justice and meaning in this situation and help others recognize the danger signs and help others see how they can escape from situations that are difficult and tragic. I thank you, members of the press, for being here today. Uh, we appreciate your presence. Uh, in the coming months, we'll be filing a complaint. The Petitos will be in Utah at that time uh, so that you can have freer access uh, to them. And uh, we will let you know in a couple of months when we're filing that legal document. Thank you for being here. Claiming that this is an exemption, you're claiming that that's yeah. 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 I don't, I don't know that we need to keep rehashing things that were covered a bunch of times. But um, here's a little snippet of the... Let me see. Is this done here? Oh, let's do this first. Let's watch this little clip from NBC or whatever today. ...into a heartbreaking end. And then I'll get, get to the document. ...disappeared while on a road trip with her fiancé. Well, now her mother is on a mission to protect others from her daughter's fate. She talked about it with NBC senior national correspondent Kate Snow. Kate, good morning to you. Good morning, Craig. So as we approach that one year since her death, Gabby's mother, Nicole Schmidt, joined me to announce the... No problem. Yeah, captions are on, guys, so you can use captions if you need it for the live stream. Gabby Petito Foundation's sizable gift to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. It will go toward a larger fundraising goal that would enable them to hire more staff and save lives. How are you? It's so hard. It's still hard every single We're day. We're trying. We're trying to do good. This is a new, this was a couple days ago, but it's really short. Good. For Gabby and for everybody else. Gabby Petito's mother is determined to help others. This morning, Nicole Schmidt announcing the foundation named in her daughter's honor is donating $100,000 to the National Domestic Violence Hotline. Our story begins because of domestic violence tragedy, and we don't want to see that happen to anybody else. 
the hotline CEO by her side. Do you think some women came forward because they saw Gabby's story? Absolutely. Brian's stretching. The laughing, loving videos of a cross-country road trip with Gabby's fiancé, Brian Laundrie, painted a picture of bliss, but just days before her death. We drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. Bystanders called the police in Moab, Utah. There's two people saying that they saw him punch you. We're just independent witnesses by Moonflower. Well, to be honest, I definitely hit him first. I want to jump through the screen and rescue my daughter. She's hurting. She's scared. Looking at it now, do you suspect that that was the only time this ever happened in their relationship? In hindsight, looking at that, no. Gabby Petito's body was later found in Wyoming. The coroner said she was strangled. Brian Laundrie disappeared and took his own life. In June, his lawyer released pages of Brian's notebook. The notes. So a lot of the stuff we already covered, you know. That said Gabby fell in a creek and was in extreme pain. Quote, I ended her life. I thought it was merciful that it is what she wanted. You tweeted fed up with an image that read, narcissists rewrite history to escape accountability. You are not crazy. What did you mean by that? That was his character. Even in his last moments, he wanted to make sure he looked like the good guy. The hero. Right? That's ridiculous. We know how she died. You think it's blatantly untrue? Uh, 100%. The Laundry's attorney had no comment. After Gabby's murder, the National Domestic Violence Hotline saw an uptick oh, in that's calls true. and chats. Michelle said he called Brian a gentleman. F that. He's no gentleman. He a monster. That's strangers reached out to Gabby's family. We got a lot of messages and emails from people that said, your daughter saved my life. I left because of her. But this summer, the hotline is overwhelmed with nearly twice as many calls and chats as last year and wait times over 15 minutes. Every potential call that's coming in is someone's life, and that's how we have to think about this. Time is precious. Lives are precious. The hotline says the Gabby Petito Foundation's donation will help them hire more staff. Nicole says she's proud of her daughter. She touched the world, right? This whole tragedy that happened is for a higher purpose. That's what keeps me going. The National Domestic Violence Hotline has a goal of raising $2 million total. Their campaign's called Hope Can't Wait. For more information, you can head to today.com. We should mention Gabby's parents and step-parents have sued the Laundry family, alleging that Brian told his parents he had killed Gabby before he returned home without her. They say the Laundry's refused to respond to them or law enforcement during the search. The Laundry's attorney denies those allegations and says, quote, the Laundry's had no obligation to speak to law enforcement or any third party including the petito family mm. guys okay let me uh just go over this document a little bit of reading this is what was put out august this was august 5th the uh, notice of claim let's see Gentlemen. I'm just going to skip to the sta- statement of facts. Brian Longy murdered Gabby Petito by strangling her and savagely inflicting blunt force trauma to her head. He murdered her shortly after the Moab Police Department failed to adequately respond to reports and evidence of domestic violence between Brian and Gabby. Many facts related to the matter were widely reported in national and international media. The following briefly summarizes the primary events relevant to notice to this notice. Uh, so we know she was a, a influencer or, you know, aspiring to be an influencer. Uh, on August 12th, 2021, Gabby and Brian visited Moab, Utah. They spent much of the day in a coffee shop where Gabby worked on her social media business. Afterward on the sidewalk of outside on the sidewalk outside the moonflower community cooperative, Brian and Gabby began to fight a witness described them as talking aggressively in a way that led the witness to believe that something seemed off. The witness saw Brian take Gabby's phone into their van and attempt to block Gabby from getting into the van. Gabby eventually climbed over Brian to get into the van. The witness's impression was that Brian appeared to be attempting to leave Gabby after taking her phone. Another witness to that incident called 911 and reported seeing Brian Laundrie slapping Gabby and that he hit her while chasing her up and down the sidewalk before 
getting into their van and driving away. Police dispatch alerted officers to the report, including the fact that a witness had seen Brian assault Gabby. So it was like two different things. We've kind of covered this. There is a 911 call to me. If you guys want to listen to that, it's like, it's pretty short. If you guys want to listen to the 911 call, we can listen to it. It's, it's very brief, but like, again, like even these details, everything we've covered, it's just recapping pretty much. Uh, Officer Daniel Robbins found Gabby and Brian's van driving on the highway out of the town. He saw it speeding, crossing the double yellow line, and swerving to hit a curb before stopping near the entrance of Arches National Park. Soon, Officer Pratt and two park rangers joined Officer Robbins at the scene. The officers separated Brian and Gabby in order to speak with them individually. According, or when speaking with Gabby, Officer Robbins noted that she was visibly in a crisis, crying uncontrollably. According to Officer Robinson's report, at no point during the interactions with Gabby did she stop crying, breathing heavily, or compose a sentence without needing to wipe away tears, wipe her nose, or rub her knees with her hands. He later explained that she didn't seem fully coherent to the world, not like she was intoxicated or, or under the influence, but her mind went into a black zone, so to speak. Officer Robinson, sorry, Officer Robbins also saw cuts on Gabby's cheek and arm. Gabby demonstrated how Brian had violently grabbed her face during the altercation and explained that Brian gets frustrated with me a lot. Indeed, the cut to Gabby's face was much more serious than we, than may have been apparent in the body cam footage. Another photo taken at the time, which has not yet been released. So this is the new information publicly shows a close up view of Gabby's face where blood is smeared on her cheek and left eye revealing the violent nature of Brian's attack. So that's going to be interesting that we haven't seen. The photo shows that Gabby's face was grabbed across her nose and mouth, potentially restricting her airway. When asked about her fight with Brian, Gabby displayed a classic hallmarks of an abused partner attempting to take blame for the fight because she had hit Brian first and that she did not want to be separated from him, whether for lack of training or refusal to follow their training, the officers did not press further. Brian told Officer Robbins that he and Gabby had been under increasing emotional strain, which led them to which led them arguing more frequently over the previous few days. Brian claimed that when they were outside the co-op, Gabby believed Brian was trying to leave. Leave her in Moab without her cell phone, so she attempted to slap him to avoid being slapped. Brian attempted to Brian attempted or sorry, admitted he pushed Gabby away. He admitted taking her cell phone because he said, I don't have a phone. And he was afraid that if she goes off without me, I'm on my own. But later in his interview with the officers, Brian pulled his own phone out. That, and that whole thing was a whole thing, too. <laughs> that whole thing was a whole thing, too. I did a video on that because there was a whole thing about was there another phone? Was there not? And then you see he does pull out a phone out of his pocket. Brian pulled his own phone from his pocket and gave the officers his number. Brian also claimed that he had, attempt, he had been attempting to separate himself from Gabby by convincing her that she they should take separate walks into downtown Moab, apparently contradicting witnesses who had seen him attempting to leave in the van without Gabby. So they're saying he's lying. You liar. The officers did not question Brian about the inconsistencies in his version of events. Instead, they determined that Gabby was the primary aggressor and that Brian was a potential victim of DV. Based on that determination, Officer Pratt explained to Brian and Gabby that the officers lacked any discretion, but were required to charge Gabby and take her to jail. He also explained that the Utah law automatically imposes a no contact order to keep the parties to a domestic dispute separate. And that Brian would need to sign a waiver of that order in the morning. If he wanted to reunite with Gabby, both Brian and Gabby pleaded for some other way of resolving the problem. Okay. That's page four. What else we got? Four. Uh, okay, so Officer Pratt called Assistant Chief Palmer to seek assistance on how to handle the situation. Chief Palmer instructed Officer Pratt to carefully read the assault statute and decide whether the situation satisfied the statute. Officer Pratt Googled the statute. After reading only the first half of the statute, Officer Pratt decided incorrectly 
that Utah law only recognizes assault if the perpetrator intended to cause bodily harm. Based on that incomplete and incorrect understanding of the law, Officer Pratt questioned Gabby about whether she intended to cause Brian bodily injury when she hit him. Gabby said no. Officer Pratt, the significantly more senior officer, told Officer Robbins to decide what to do. Officer Robbins said that he didn't entirely believe Gabby and decided to prepare a crime report. He decided not to impose charges at the time, but to allow the city attorney to screen the report and decide whether to press charges. Despite previously stating that he would support Officer Robbins' decision, Officer Pratt pushed back, warning Officer Robbins that if Brian and Gabby strongly disagree with his decision and they throw a, and they throw a complete fit, you might hear about it in a very negative way. One of the park rangers on scene also pushed back, explaining that she would rather be dinged for a decision I made than a decision I didn't make. Officer Pratt added, especially if they think you were completely negligent in your decision. Even so, Officer Pratt again told Officer Robbins that he would support Officer Robbins' decision. Officer Robbins then decided to issue a citation for DA and go through the typical process. Again, despite repeated assurances that he would support Officer Robbins' decision, Officer Pratt asked if Officer Robinson's would feel more comfortable responding to another dispatch call that had recently come in. Officer Robbins said that he would he was uncertain of how to proceed. Officer Pratt suggested that the officers could separate Brian and Gabby for the night to take note for their action. Officer Pratt suggested that if Brian and Gabby later found each other, it wouldn't be the officer's responsibility. Consistent with Officer Pratt's suggestion, Officer Robbins found a place for Brian to stay for the night. That's what we see in the video too, where they go to that. They took Brian to like a hotel, got him a place to stay. And, uh, which I, I guess is part of the process for a victim. I think a place to stay for the night, a local DV organization, seek Haven while allowing Gabby to keep the van and sleep in the van. So Brian gets a nice hotel, I guess, or hotel room and Gabby's out for the night in the van. While the police interviewed Brian and Gabby, Gabby was on the phone with her parents. They demanded that Gabby fly home to get away from Brian, offering to pay for her ride to Salt Lake City and her flight home. But upon learning the police were involved, they accepted Gabby's, Gabby's assurances that she should continue her trip, which is kind of crazy to me. Roughly two weeks later, Brian brutally murdered Gabby, leaving her body in the woods in Grand Teton National Forest. In, sub in a subsequent review, the Moab police officers handling of the incident, an independent investigator concluded that the officers made several mistakes and could not rule out that Gabby's murder might have been prevented if the officers handled the situation properly. Let me ask you this. And, and this is kind of like no way of telling, but had somebody been arrested, would that have saved Gabby's life? Right? Maybe I'll put a poll and we'll continue this one more page. Let me ask that right here. And if you guys could hit like, I'd appreciate that. That helps the stream. It's popping in for a little. Had someone been arrested, whether it was Gabby or Brian, whatever, because looking at it, you know, the officer's perspective, they thought Brian was the victim. So to the officers, I guess they should have arrested Gabby, even though in hindsight, we see that that, that wasn't the case. At least, I, you know, most of us do. Had someone been arrested, would Gabby be alive? And then I'll tell you my, I mean, uh, yeah, I'll tell you my answer. I, I ran the, I'm going to give it a minute before I give my answer. I've already said this before on live stream. I see the chat says some, one person says yes. A lot of people say no. That's what I think Nikki too. There's no way for us to know, you know, but I mean, just, you know, what you think. But, you know, as, as for parents, too, I can imagine, like, if you're the parents of your, your kid that was killed, uh, I'd be pissed seeing that video. And for sure, I'd be like, F that. Everybody needs to be held accountable. We need to make some changes. So I understand from that perspective as well. Or I could try to understand anyway. You know. What's up? Welcome, guys. Welcome to the stream. Appreciate you hanging out with me. Okay. Wow, it's kind of mixed. So actually, 58% say Gabby would still be alive. 
42 percent say no i feel like at some point this would have happened i mean i i feel like at some point this would have led to where it's at had somebody been arrested maybe i feel like they still would have got back together i feel like even if uh and just just opinion speculation i feel like even if they had been separated even if somebody was getting charged which they were separated but like even if somebody was arrested, I feel like at some point, because of the mentality that they're in, when you're in that kind of situation in that relationship, I guess you keep going back. And I feel like it probably potentially probably still would have happened. But, you know, who, who knows? Uh, Joseph and Tara Petito and Nicole and Jim Schmidt hereby provide the notice of claims for negligence that they intend to bring on their own behalf and on Gabby's behalf against Moab Police Department. Assistant Chief Palmer, Officer Pratt, Officer Robbins, and Jane slash John does 110 defendants for their negligent failure to understand and enforce law, the law of the state of Utah to investigate Brian's self-evidently false claims during their interviews with him to properly train the officers to investigate DV situations and to properly assess the circumstances, including the to identify Brian as a true primary aggressor. Additionally, Joseph and Tara and Nicole and Jim intend to bring claims on their own behalf and on Gabby's behalf of, for a wrongful death against the defendants on the ground that Gabby's death was caused by their wrongful acts or, ne or neglect. Providing when the death of a person is caused by the wrongful act or neglect of another, his, hers, or his personal representatives for the benefit of, of their hires. So what it says, of his hires, they attain maintain an action for damages against the person cause, causing the death. I don't know. I wonder if that's going to be tough to pull. I mean, they, they were negligent. They did make mistakes. Damages incurred as a result of the defendant's wrongful acts and neglect. Joseph and Tara, Nicole and Jim, Jim's daughter was brutally murdered. Although their damages are not amenable to precise calculation, they have suffered, among other things, a loss of society, comfort, association, love, console, care, consortium, and protection, loss of reasonable expectation to associate with Gabby, the value of services Gabby would have provided, and other special and general damages. Similarly, as a result of the defendant's wrongful acts and neglect, Gabby suffered personal injuries resulting in death, pain, emotional distress, mental anguish, impaired earning capacity, loss of wages and other general and special damages joseph tara nicole and jim are seeking 50 mil in damages wow based on the claim set forth above Oof, 50 million wow so 57 percent say yes yeah we'll be alive 42 percent say no well, that's interesting the poll has spoken Or the chat has spoken, really. <clears throat> uh, let's listen to the 911 call real quick. A little bit of 911 call. It's really like these images. So it's just so hard to tell because of the quality. Cut by her right ear as well. I didn't notice that until now. Let's see. I hope they release the images, the family. I don't know if they're going to wait till like maybe the thing starts. It's just with these images to me, it's so hard to tell. I mean, anything can look like anything, especially with contrast or just blurriness or lighting or whatever. And so. Let me see me show another one. I think so too, Vic, for sure. So beautiful disaster says the resources Gabby would have got if they helped her, it would have changed the outcome. Maybe. Why are you mad, Lindsay? Now I'm mad. Um, all right, let's play the 911 call. Let's do that. I think it's this link. 
Or we could look at the police reports. Here's too. how you can make. I want to do that. We could look at the police reports too if we wanted. But I mean, I've already covered those police reports. Like a big one. Grand County Sheriff's Office. Oh, let me fix the volume real quick. Fix the volume. Oh, and by the way, for the people that were following the whole the situation with uh, Yasir, I think today's they're doing the verdict watch right now. What I was told. So it's come to an end already. I'm kind of curious what the closing statements were like, and I'm wondering if Yasir Saeed, if he testified. This was the whole quote unquote honor killings. Grand County Sheriff's Office. Were you able to get a description of the intoxication? Hi, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, uh, I'm calling. I'm right on the corner of Main Street by Moonflower, and we're driving by, and I'd like to report a domestic dispute. A Florida with a white van, Florida license plate, white land, gentleman, Where's about five, six beard. They just drove off. They're going down Main Street. They made a, uh, a right onto Main Street from Moonflower. Or what were they doing? Cooperative, but um, what do you say? What were they doing? Uh, we drove by and the gentleman was slapping the girl. He was slapping her. Yes, and then we stopped. They ran up and down the sidewalk. He proceeded to hit her. Hopped in the car, and they drove off. Okay, you said um, it's a white van. White van. I give you the. I give you the license plate. If you give me one sec, I took okay. a picture of it. <laughs> what kind of white van? Fifty mil, baby. Like a big one? Um, it, it was a smaller van with the license plate of, it was white, Florida license plate QFT G03. It was, the make was a Ford, model was transit, black ladder on the passenger side. Black ladder, uh, passenger uh, side. White Ford Transit. White Ford Transit. Okay, what's your name? And where did they... So they turned, they headed south on Main Street from Moonflower Market? Correct. They made the right turn. Oh, so they went north? North. Yeah, sorry, I'm not from around here. Okay, are you, so you're right there by the post office? Right across the street, yep. Okay, and, and when they turned on to Main Street, they went right or left? Right. Right, so they went north. North on Main all right, I will let somebody know. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Bye. Thanks. Hello, I'm Mark Brown. Get that was it. Um, okay. So I guess that's it for that. I wanted to show one more thing because yesterday, so I was at my mother's house, completely unrelated, different topic. I don't know if you guys, I heard about this in the chat. My mother was telling me about like, oh, I saw something on the TV where like some um, Muslim guys were killed or targeted or something like that. And she's like, have you heard about it? I was like, no. And then somebody tagged me today on Twitter about this. Uh, I don't know what this is about. Let's see. Hold on a second. We're going to take a look at a video clip. I'm just kind of curious before we get out. And there's a missing persons case, too, that's going on. That's actually kind of interesting, I think, that I might cover. And, and there's other stuff, too. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of all over the place. This was 18 hours ago. This is News Nation. It says, APD releases photos of a vehicle of interest in the shootings of four Muslim men. If you have any information, vehicle's picture below is suspected as being used as conveyance in recent homicides of four Muslim men. The heck? And the people that were shot, do they know each other? And we're also tracking some more breaking news tonight. Police searching for a silver Volkswagen Jetta in connection to a series of killings near Albuquerque. Now, police now think those murders are connected. News Nation's Robert Sherman is live tonight with the story. Robert, what do we know? Well, Melanie, we know, according to law enforcement, that one Muslim man was shot and killed last night. And this is the fourth Muslim man who's been killed in Albuquerque. The first killing going all the way back 
nine months ago to late last year. The other three happening in just the last couple of weeks. So this is a fluid investigation. There's still more that we're expecting to come out of this. But police are saying that there's a quote unquote strong possibility that all of these killings are linked together. Yeah. The president has already weighed in on this, taking to Twitter. He said this earlier today, quote, I am angered. The president's talking about this? Wow. I'm angered and saddened by the horrific killings of four Muslim men in Albuquerque. While we wait, await a full investigation, my prayers are with the victims' families. And my administration stands strong with the Muslim community. Wow, okay. People getting killed all the time, but I'm surprised. Yeah, okay. Biden's talking about this. Let's see. And so are they targeted because they're Muslim or is it somebody that they know do and do the people that were killed do they know each other and by the horrific killings of four Muslim men in Albuquerque while we await a full investigation my prayers are with the victims families and my administration stands strongly with the Muslim community these hateful attacks have no really place nuts. in America uh, we've also heard from Congresswoman Melanie Stansbury of the state of New Mexico she just weighed in a few minutes ago take a listen to what she had to say thank you Brandy for the super chats to the uh, Albuquerque Islamic community and frankly that community statewide. I am incredibly angry about this situation. Every New Mexican should stand up uh, and against this kind of hatred. It has no place in this city. I wonder, I mean, it could be a hate crime, but they don't know though. I want to know more about this now. Okay, killings. Let's see what else we can find. City, and it has no place. What if it's another Muslim doing it? In our state. We have also heard from local religious leaders on the ground in New Mexico who say that they're scared. They're frightened about what's going on. They say that there are members of the Muslim community in New Mexico who are trying to get all of their work done during the day, not be out on the streets when evening comes. It just goes to show the heartbreak and terror that's going on in those communities. But again, we are at the early onset of this investigation. I mean, it could be somebody just targeting Muslims, I guess. Yeah. Hard to say, uh, there's an article here that has the picture of the people that were shot and killed. Um, oh, oops. I gotta fix this thing. It's all jacked up. Let's do it right now while I have you guys. Fix it. Okay. Ah! Okay. So these are the one, two, three, four. says KOB4 confirmed with multiple people in the Muslim community that men that the men were killed overnight. Oh wow. 25 year old Naeem Hussein. The first victim possibly linked to this case is 62 year old Muhammad who was killed last year. So and so they say that the vehicle is believed to be linked in all these. So it's like I guess one person. So last year the first one the second victim is 41-year-old Aftab Hussein, um, who was murdered less than two weeks ago. And then 27-year-old Mohammed Hussein is the third victim who was killed Monday night. Now, Naeem Hussein, who was a man killed overnight. Police have not said whether they believe one person or multiple sus suspects carried out these heinous attacks, but they did give an update on their investigation Saturday afternoon. The main message from law enforcement was that they needed the public's help to catch whoever is targeting Muslim men. They said they couldn't share if they had any leads or suspect descriptions at the time, but they're urging anyone with information or tips relating to any of these four murders to call law enforcement right away. The APD, FBI, and both the district and U.S. attorneys all spoke against these uh, where we go? Okay. Okay. Spoke out against these murders Saturday, not only calling for more information, but also urging members of Albuquerque's Muslim community to stay vigilant and be extra careful in the coming days. 
The APD says they believe these killings are connected, but it's still early in the investigation. And they were asked if uh, they're considering this a serial killer at this time. And they responded, I think it's too early to comment on that or classify it as with that term like that right now. This is an alarming death that con connects to others as far, as far as we can tell. So we'll focus on that and focus together with our federal partners. Hmm. The press conference ended with a man. Okay, so can we find this press conference? Let's see if we can hear all the details. So Albuquerque police. Let's try that. Hold on a second. Hmm. <clears throat> Day one is asking where. Uh, Lena go. Where did Lena go missing? In Texas, San Antonio. Okay, there is a press conference. Shit, it's like thirty some minutes long. Should we start a new stream for the shit? Especially of justice. Some Q and A. Uh, wow, they're doing the whole media thing on this. Important information to cover. Okay. Um. Maybe we should start another stream and watch the press conference. How about that? We'll split it up. Split it up. Let's split it up. Let's do that. Let's do that. Hold on. Let me just start a new stream. Stay right here. I'm going to move you guys. <coughs> it's just easier to separate it because then people are going to be like, oh, we're just here for the Gabby Petito. Why are you talking about this? I need a thumbnail. Somebody just sent me an image of, oh, you know what? I got it. Sorry, I'm looking for a title real quick. Okay. Boom. And it said the community's in fear because they feel like they're being targeted. just whipping something together and then we'll fix it while we're listening to the live presser. Okay. Shootings of form. Right now, yeah, it does. It just doesn't make much sense. I just lose out for doing all this stuff in one. It's better to split it up. So, for people that want to see about the Muslim shooting, they can see that people are not going to go to Gabby Petito to watch the Muslim shooting. Okay, uh, so I'm going to move you guys over now. Just hang tight. You can either go if you want, or when I end this right now, it's going to move you over. Let's do this. Redirect. Redirect. Bang, bang. Okay, here we go. Ready? <laughs> 